Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Another week, another disaster for Boeing. Oh my god, it's on fire. Oh my god. Just as Boeing shareholders thought it couldn't get any worse, the company is now facing another federal investigation into its safety protocols after a plane's engine caught fire outside Miami airport. As this stock has dropped nearly 20% in the last month due to all of the recent accidents, we know that value investors are going to be interested. They're going to be looking at this stock and evaluating whether it's worth buying on the dip. But a 20% discount on Boeing is like putting makeup on a pig, and I don't want you to end up like Kermit. Well, one man's poison is another man's bacon. <laughs> in a loveless marriage with a value trap. So today, let's go through why I think Boeing is a value trap, what the growth story is and the financials, as well as why I own its competitor, Airbus's stock instead of Boeing. In order to understand Boeing as an investment, it's useful to understand the economics of the airline industry in general. When you invest into any sector, you have to do the research and understand which companies are taking the lion's share of profits from that sector. For example, in the music industry, Spotify has growing revenue every year, but it has very minimal profits, whereas the music label companies have huge profits every year. That implies that Spotify is on the losing end of the economic trade here between music labels and Spotify. So when it comes to Boeing as an investment, is it making the lion's share of profits in the airline industry? Well, it used to. Aircraft manufacturing used to make the lion's share of profits within the airline industry, whereas airline operators like Spirit, Frontier, and so on, had to live off the scraps. They've returned very little in the way of profits to their shareholders over the last few years and been a terrible investment. But previously, Boeing had increasing free cash flows every single year up until 2019. So what happened? Well, a series of accidents as well as COVID hit Boeing extremely hard. This brand new plane crashed twice in the span of about five months. How could this possibly happen? How long is this plane going to be grounded? Boeing says there's a fix. When is it coming? Boeing was once held up to be the gold standard of engineering excellence. And today it has lost a lot of credibility. In 2019, it came out that software issues on the Boeing 737 MAX had caused two major fatal plane crashes. And that led to the plane being grounded in various different countries across the world, orders being suspended and Boeing having to turn towards debt in order to prevent the company going under. If that wasn't bad enough, in 2020, COVID struck. And that caused planes to be unable to be built due to labor and parts shortages. The company has had to turn towards a huge amount of debt in that time period. Meanwhile, its rival Airbus started to take market share from Boeing and overtook it as the largest airplane manufacturer globally. Although Airbus also took out a lot of debt during the pandemic to continue operations, it never actually exceeded a net debt of zero, or its cash always remained larger than its debt. Whereas if you look at Boeing, Boeing used to have a similar debt level back in 2018, but after the crisis, it had to borrow a huge amount and now nearly has $35 billion of net debt. Meanwhile, the company is facing another safety crisis, which could be just as bad as the previous one. But why is Boeing facing so many safety issues? Is it just a temporary blip? And can the company return to its pre-2019 levels of profit? Or is there something a bit more sinister going on? Well, the main accusation that the company receives is that it's transitioned from being a company of excellent engineering to being one that primarily focuses on financial targets and is financially driven. That's not necessarily a bad thing for shareholders, but the main issue comes when the company cuts back on engineering costs in order to look more profitable, and that comes at the expense of quality and safety. The development of the 737 MAX in the first place pretty much exemplifies that kind of attitude. Threatened by Airbus taking market share, the company decided to announce the 737 MAX, which was an upgrade on the very popular 737 model, rather than developing an entirely new model of plane altogether. And by doing that, the company was able to save a huge amount of money that it was able to funnel into share buybacks and dividends over that time period. 
and make shareholders happy. The price of the stock continued to shoot upwards. But since the release of the plane in 2016, it's been troubled by huge amounts of safety issues and declining consumer confidence in the plane. The CEO of the company, Dave Calhoun, was reportedly on the verge of tears when he called an all hands meeting to discuss with employees the recent safety issues and how they can better improve them. And the last three or four years of supposed safety improvements for the company since this 2019 crashes has clearly been called into question by the recent slew of accidents with 737 MAX planes. Now, it might seem like it's a disaster for Boeing here, and although things are definitely negative, it's not as bad as it actually looks. Even though Airbus is taking market share from the company, Airbus is very limited in how many aircraft it can produce each month, and it's actually fully backlogged until the 2030s in terms of orders. Airline operators are effectively stuck between a rock and a hard place here. They either have to buy Boeing airplanes or they can't buy any airplanes at all. And they obviously need to buy airplanes to actually run their business model. That's the power of the duopoly of Airbus and Boeing, and the power of monopolies or duopolies in general. In addition to that, I do think that the fear that consumers will refuse to fly in Boeing 737 MAX planes is very overblown because at the end of the day, the vast majority of people don't know or even check what model of plane they're flying, let alone know whether it's built by Boeing or Airbus. So I think that is basically FUD. In spite of all this, I still think the company is a value trap and why? Well, the whole debacle shows that the companies in the airline manufacturing business have to spend huge amounts of capital on upgrading and maintaining their aircraft. It's not a capital light business like a software business. It's a very capital intensive business. And if you even take a few years rest in order to pay dividends, buy back shares and please shareholders, you will fall behind and pay the price in coming years. When it comes to return on capital employed, all the amount of capital that you have to employ or spend in order to generate more capital, Boeing reached levels of over 30 in 2017 and 2018. But I personally believe those are effectively manipulated by the company not spending enough money on safety and quality in order to cut corners. So I don't really think that's realistic. I think a more realistic ROCE is around mid-teens level or the amount that they were getting in the years preceding 2017. So personally, I don't think that a return of capital employed of mid-teens level is a particularly attractive one. If you look at other companies that I'm invested in, like Ulta Beauty, they have a 40% ROCE and that's much more attractive as a business model to me as an investor it leaves the company with far more money to return to shareholders in the form of buybacks and dividends. But if Boeing isn't necessarily a great investment, then what about Airbus? Well, back in the COVID period, I was actually invested into both of these companies, thinking that they would do really well after the post-COVID travel boom. And although I was correct in the sense that there was a travel boom, these companies did not produce as much revenue as I expected. And the reason was that Airbus and Boeing are unable to build as many planes as they want to build and deliver them. And they are missing delivery targets year after year. And this was a particular disappointment for me for Boeing. So I ended up selling the stock as well as the debt issues with the company. But for Airbus, they also are experiencing the same problems. And even though the stock price has gone up significantly, I don't necessarily think that it's a great industry to be invested in. When revenue increases are limited by factors outside of a company's control, it's a really tough sell. If any other company in my portfolio had customers that had demand for their products, they would just be able to buy extra ones. Think of Apple, they could just buy an Apple iPhone. It's not like they're ever going to be limited in the amount they produce. Same thing with Ulta Beauty. You could just go into a store and buy more stuff. It's not like the stores are overcrowded. Or Meta, you could sign up for Instagram. It's not like there's a limit on how many Instagram users there are. But with Airbus, they actually have a huge amount of demand for their planes, but they literally cannot build anymore because of external factors outside of their control. I thought that this would slow down after COVID and the amount of planes being built would speed up. But the reality is it's been two years and delivery targets are still being missed year after year. 
To summarize, I do think that the safety fears around Boeing probably are overblown, at least when it comes to the share price, but I still think the company is a value trap. I think the industry in general is a really difficult one for capturing value for shareholders. The capital intensivity or the amount of money that Boeing has to spend to maintain its business is insane and it also has a huge amount of debt that it never used to have before the pandemic. So personally, I won't be investing my money into Boeing. I don't think that it's one that is a long-term compounder in the same way that many of the other companies that I own are. If you did enjoy the video and you've made it this far, please leave me a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.